range. Uh, let's see, let's see what have we got here. I think we're live. I think, I do believe that we are live. Good morning, everybody. If I keep saying good morning, good morning, good morning until Michelle tells me if she can see me, am I live? Right, good morning, everyone. So first, let me say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who, of course, as always, is standing to my right side. Yes, we have the puppy on the, on the sofa, uh, sound asleep, enjoying. The fan is going. It's very warm here in Florida today. It's glorious. So we've got the fans going and all the rest of it. And the doors are wide open at the back. It's so nice. And let's say good morning to Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. We're in a good mood, aren't we? We're in, a, we're in a very, we're always in a good mood, aren't yeah, we? We're always, always in, a good, in a good mood, except sometimes she does come in. She walks through the door. She says, hello. Our eyes are sleepy because <laughs> she works so, so hard. So sometimes she's exhausted aren't you but always we're always in a good mood no matter what is going on and it is really funny sometimes because i will after the show try to get up off the sofa my back seizes up i start laughing <laughs> michelle starts laughing i'm in great pain but so what we're having fun, right? So, because right. as you're trying to get up, so am I. And either I one of us are. Michelle's tried to get up off of the floor. She's got a broken hip. I'm trying to get up because we're we're like two old ladies, and she's. <laughs> I am an old lady, but she, she's absolutely not an old lady. All right then. Uh, we're also in a good mood today. So excited because my darling boy is coming on Saturday. I'm so excited. One more day to go. Did you ever sing that when you were kids? One more day to go. One more day in sorrow. We'd sing it when we were leaving school. One more day in this old dump and we'll be home tomorrow. Did you ever sing that one? No. No. Well, it's a very British thing then. Uh, anyway, we yakety yakety away. So let me tell you a little bit about my day today. Well, and tomorrow I have to make my super deluxe, fantastic, phenomenal, deliciously tasting chocolate cake. This is what I tell my grandson anyway. Uh, so, uh, because we are having an, another birthday party. His birthday was yesterday. He had his birthday party on Sunday. He had a birthday party yesterday. He's having another one on Sunday. But we, he requested a pizza party but Michelle informed me today she's coming with her daughters and some other kids, Reese's age, I think, mm -hmm. and lots of other friends. She informed me, I don't like pizza. Well, I don't care for pizza either, so maybe I'll make some ginger chicken wings. Maybe. I would have made ribs, but she forgot to bring them this morning. I can go get them. Um, she can go get them, though. So we might have ribs and chicken, and maybe I'll make a really nice potato salad and so on and so forth, and the kids can have all the that pizza stuff and we'll eat the good stuff right so anyway and of course the pool is being heated and we're going to have a pool party doesn't it sound lovely for all of you who are in in the north or in england or places where it's freezing 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 cold my only suggestion to to you all is leave where you are leave the cold leave the snow and come and come live with me in the warm not with me, maybe close to me, but not with me. Come into the warm because it really, it really does make a huge difference when you are in the sunshine. Uh, if you can't move and if you can't be in the sunshine, take a look at my face. I wish I could show you Michelle's face because hers is a bright, shiny face. So between the two of us, we are sending you sunshine in our smiles. Right. So, I know that we have a few questions. <laughs> Dean says the wind chill is negative 30 in Wisconsin. I remember, I remember it well, Dean. I was in Vermont for 15 years. I did love, however, I loved those days when the sun shone brightly, the snow was pristine, just had, having snowed perhaps the night before, the sun shining, glistening on the snow, a blue, blue, clear blue sky and the sun would sort of come into the windows in my uh, my house in Vermont and I could sit in the armchair and have no heat on and, the, and it would be like a greenhouse in there and just looking out at the snow is absolutely glorious. Snowshoeing is also fun to do 
except that you've got to then, when you come back into the house, have a hot toddy. Would you like my recipe for hot toddy, Dean? Would anybody out there like my recipe for hot toddy? It's really, really simple. Are you ready? You need brandy or whiskey, your choice. Uh, you need a, a, a nice glass to drink it out of. You can't drink hot toddy in a, in a mug. I know some of you do, but really, it tastes much nicer if you have it in a crystal glass or a nice, really nice glass. So you boil the water, but you leave it. It has to come off the boil, otherwise you'll ruin the alcohol. <laughs> so you pour into your glass a third of a glass of whatever chosen brandy or uh, or whiskey, you really can't use anything else for a genuine hot toddy. A good spoonful of brown sugar, mix it in. Some people like a little cinnamon in, but I do not because I do not like cinnamon. But if you put cinnamon in just a teeny, teeny pinch, hope you're all writing this down. Actually, you can play it back, can't you as well? A cinnamon stick is always good to put in it because you can stir it, but you don't get that too much of the flavor of, of uh, cinnamon and um, and you uh, then my my daddy always used to get some good pickling spices and put a good pinch of pickling spices in there and then pour your hot water on the top give it a good stir sip slowly it will warm you right through down to your toes it's so delicious my daughter when she had a cold I'm afraid I'm ashamed to tell you even when she was five and four and not when she was three maybe she was five one time she she had such an awful cold so I gave her a hot toddy without the spices I gave her a little hot toddy and I said now drink it slowly I went into the kitchen to do something and I came back in two minutes later and it was gone downed and she was holding out the the glass to me mama that made me feel so much better can I have another one so I made her another one but much weaker uh, it's good in the cold it's good so try it Dean do Dean we says have... that's the exact description of today what you described all oh, right <laughs> well good all right so hot toddy time uh, all right um, right uh, where are asked we? if you can use scotch well, scot scotch is whiskey. Scotch, I, I can hear some of you saying, oh, no, it isn't. Uh, but, yeah, scotch whiskey, scotch. Uh, you have different names, a bourbon. That you, I think it's the same thing. A good it's, bourbon oh, it's a do Good it. bourbon, whiskey, it's the same thing. I know, not technically necessarily, but, yes, all of those things. And But do sip it and uh, do take your time to drink it. But... Even the first or second sip will warm you right through. And uh, of course, I've got some more of those delicious recipes uh, in my cookbook. I'm trying to think of another one that I can give you off the top of my head. But the only one I can think of off the top of my head is a summer drink, which, no, not in the snow. You don't want it in the snow. We can have it here. We could have it here. I could make us a pins <laughs> for Sunday. <Ooh. laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, enough of the booze. Enough of the spirits. We like the good spirits. We do. Uh, and we like to, I love to try new drinks as well. So anyway, all right. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe on Sunday I won't make pims. Maybe on yeah. Sunday I'll make some um, margaritas. My special margaritas. Nobody makes a margarita like I make a, a margarita. Right, let's moving on. Moving away from the spirits. Two more spirits different of a different spirits. kind. Um, I know that you've had, Michelle, a couple of uh, emails, pe people wanting questions through email. And it is a good way if you, if you sort of, you know, if you, if you can't always be on or you're not quite sure how to use the chat, little chat button there, um, you know, it is a good way to, to let us know what your questions are. And you can always email us. I will give you the email. I shall give, be giving it to you throughout the show rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com it is not rosemary r-o-s-e-m-a-r-y rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com yes are you ready over i'm a, oh, yes i'm ready i am so ready let's go margarita actually emailed with a couple questions go, so we're just going to start at the beginning yeah okay that's says, how do our departed loved ones see us 
Is there, if their etherical bodies are renewed, do we appear old and unattractive as we age and live out our time? I think it's a really good question, actually. Um, you know, on our Wednesday show, when we uh, talking about healing and we're we're sending out healing I have talked about the aura or the energy field that surrounds us uh, sometimes emanating from our bodies anywhere up to 15 feet wide which means that if we're in a room full of people all our auras or our energy fields are sort of you know melding with everybody else's which is why you know sometimes we can allow other people's negative energy to affect us because their energy can sometimes swamp ours uh, so it's always important to sort of think positive thoughts have very solid positive thoughts so that that doesn't happen but this those in the spirit world will see us basically they will see first of all if our energy is positive and glows and is nice and bright and beautiful and infused be with beautiful colors they will see that energy that is around us and they're not necessarily looking at the physical self you know it's a, it's a very interesting question what you know what um when somebody leaves us uh, and we're still young what are they seeing when when we when we get older and we get more wrinkled and we or we have a haircut and hey we don't look like ourselves perhaps like we did before so on and so forth all of those things how do they see us well they actually see the inner us they connect with who we are not necessarily how we look and um, uh, having said that I do have many comments from people in the spirit world commenting about you know I love your hair the way it is now or um, I really like that new uh, blue blouse that you bought yesterday that's always a stunner for people who are not even aware that someone in the spirit world is paying attention to them and they've gone out and bought that blue blouse the day before and then their loved one says love the blouse you bought and then how do, how do they know that how do they know that well maybe they've been shopping with you or maybe were there at the house when you came in and and uh, showed everyone else or you hung it up and another favorite often is uh, she's a really big shoe shopper and last week she bought some cream shoes and she took them back yesterday because they did they pinched they didn't fit properly and all those small things so we do know that they see us and we do know that they see what we're up to but they love us and our aging process is gradual so you know for instance my daughter uh, doesn't notice day to day she, I'm just me as we're all, we're just us and as we age we're not shocked every day I mean if she hadn't seen me for 10 years and then all of a sudden she came and saw me she might be shocked at the way I look but our loved ones in the spirit world are visiting us every day so they are growing with us and they are learning our new looks and that next wrinkle that odd next wrinkle uh, by the way I found another wrinkle on my face this morning I thought oh no not another one and then I realized it was where I'd sort of um, I'd been pressed up against the pillow and <laughs> I think it's gone but does it really matter anyway because I'm just me with wrinkles and all that other stuff because it's called the aging process but that doesn't mean that we you know that we are wrinkled inside or old inside so our loved ones grow with us so unless it's been 20 years and they've thoroughly shocked with how badly we've aged or how well we've aged they're not going to particularly notice that but I do like that question let's have another question okay the second part of what oh, you said is it, who is this who's asking Margareta that? Margareta good questions Margareta was will they fall out of love with us with the partner that is left behind no they love you they love you you know what kind of a a fickle uh, love well it isn't love is it uh, what kind of a fickle person would uh, you know love you but as they watch you getting older and grayer and so on somebody said to me there were I was at a, um, a dinner party the other night and uh, there were f four or five other women there and they were talking about hair and hairdressing and it, it actually bores me to tears but that's beside the point but you know they were talking about different hairdressers and there's one lady who's new to the area and so on anyway they started talking about hair and 
uh, this person covered my hair in this and that and somebody else did this and so on and so forth and I said oh I've never I've never uh, I, I don't color my hair not that I've never have when I was in my 20s I used to color it all the time used to try all sorts of things but I do not color my hair and they all swung around and looked at me and said what you don't color your hair and you can tell if you look really closely there are some little gray wispy bits all the way around the edges but the rest of it is is me um, and uh, it's good genes my father was 70 and he was his hair was black 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 but he did uh, in the last year go actually quite quite gray but good genes my mother really never went gray either so there you have it uh, a, a friend of mine actually thought that I was lying until one day she came to visit and she saw she saw the grey bits in here and she knew if I coloured my hair I wouldn't have them would I why am I talking about hair anyway I just found a patch of grey hair in mine so. did you so anyway so my friends get very one friend in particular she gets so mad because she went started going grey when she was in her 20s and uh, what can I say uh, the whirling dervishes apparently never go grey and there's a theory that their energy is so going all the time that it keeps their hair that strong colour. Maybe that's, maybe I'm secretly a, a whirling dervish. Let's move on to another question before this gets so ridiculous that I even start <laughs> getting, getting annoyed at myself. Right. Um, Dean says that he's not going to be in good shape for class today after starting with hot toddies. Oh, well, it might make you better. <laughs> um, and Joanne says... At night, my brother-in-law sees his bathroom mirror go black. Oh. What do you think that could be? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so skeptical, so my first thought is, well, it could simply be that he's turned the light off. Uh, is he really seeing it? Has he been drinking too many hot toddies? But, um, uh, you know, sometimes when we connect with the spirit world, we don't always realize that we're doing it. And it is possible to sort of be in that in that space where uh, before we actually it registers with us or before we if we don't know what to do about it we can see that sort of dark space that's there uh, uh, the, the black mirror can't really comment f fully on it um, she said it scares him it frightens him well then uh, he, I'm, this is what I'm going to suggest you can buy those little lights right that you plug in the little night lights keep a light in the bathroom all the time uh, focus on this is the light of God I'm going to keep it in the bathroom which basically keeps it well keeps it good keeps it positive rather than bring excuse me rather than bringing the negative in so get a little night light in there and keep it plugged in at all times and and uh, you know don't let yourself into that space where there is that you know that negativity uh, if you'd like, we can send you some healing and some good vibes. If you'd like to, you know, email me, rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com, and we'll put you on our healing list. How about that? Or your brother will put him on the healing list. Let's go to the next question. You don't Nettie's on. She said good morning. Who did? Nettie. Nettie, good morning, Nettie. Did, you didn't, we don't have any other questions? Not right now. Now look, people, you've got to participate. It's not just going to be me talking to you. But however... While you gather yourselves and while you start to ask more questions, so come on, you know. Oh, we let's do have a new one from Rosa. Uh, Rosa well, is joining us. Today. Okay, well, let's me talk about what I'm going to talk about. Let's gather some more questions together. Come on, everybody, get those questions going or comments or whatever. But I will tell you that we are very, very close to our goal of getting our webinars up and running and we're really really close now michelle's been working on it we think we found the right uh um whatever platform. it is platform thank you we think we found the right platform and um we're now in the process of uh, figuring out the topics that we're going to do for our webinar now i know that many of you are you know avid watchers of this show you're, you're great fans and we love you very much so if you have an idea or a topic that you think might make a good webinar or that you might be interested on we'd love to hear from you we I have a mine of 
uh, information and um, uh, I've been teaching uh, for uh, gosh lots and lots of years now over 40 years I've been teaching and so I have lots and lots of things that uh, that we can work on in our webinars um, uh, initially I think they're going to be two hours long if you want to know more about them if you would like to be put on the list so that when we do them we can let you know or if you simply want to just sort of keep informed as to what we're doing please email us now you all know because I've said it before you have to request if you want to be put on our email list you must request please put me on your email list otherwise we will not do it we don't automatically gather emails we don't automatically put you on the list you have to request it and you will get probably around four or five emails a month we do not send out emails you know crazy 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 so you know we're not going to inundate you but it is a really good way to sort of keep posted and keep watching to see what it is that we're going to be doing you can also go to Twitter and to Instagram and of course to my Facebook pages so um, so if you have a good topic that's great we have a few topics that we're thinking of doing and one of those topics is because people are always saying to me how can I how can I find my sixth sense? What is my sixth sense? How can I develop my sixth sense? So we're going to do a series, probably uh, f four webinars, that uh, explain how we find and then can use our sixth sense, um, which is, you know, that's exciting. We're going to be talking about chakras. I'm going to be showing you and talking to you about how you can use your chakras, particularly with healing. We're going to be talking about healing itself. We we might even touch on things like angels and spirit guides what are they do we all have one you know how do we see them um, there are so many can you think of any other topics that we've got sort of offhand in the, the power the, animals we're and going the to be talking yes I'm going to be showing you how you can find your power animal and how you can find your power symbol and then how you can use them because it's no good knowing what they are you need to know how to use them too so in a positive way so we're going to be having lots and lots of webinars and and with lots of lots of subjects because there are so many different facets to this subject and um again if you can think of something or uh, you know in this in this realm in in my world in my area of expertise if you can think of something that you would like and i know we're going to be talking about mediumship how does it work uh now you do understand that i can only talk from my point of view as to how my mediumship works but it's fascinating and interesting and intriguing and so on so if you can think of a subject you might like us to explore uh we'll certainly do that i'm also going to be showing you how to do psychometry uh some of you say well what is that what is psychometry fascinating fascinating subjects we're going to be talking about so if you would like to know more about our webinars please 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 just you know email me rosemary rosemaryartair.com in the subject line you might want to put webinars or you might want to put healing if you'd like us to send you healing if it's that you want to be put on the mailing list put in the subject line mailing list all of that sort of thing because it does help Michelle she can look through the emails she can see the subject line and she can put them each into their own folders and it's just a quicker way because I don't know if you can appreciate this but we do have an enormous amount of emails coming into the office on a daily basis and while I'm on the subject of uh, emails we do get some lovely emails and we love to have them and we love to hear from you and we love to hear your stories however my darlings if you could do some shortened versions <laughs> because sometimes we get paragraph upon paragraph upon paragraph upon paragraph we don't we we love your stories we love that you write to us but could you just you know keep it short and sweet because uh we we as much as we would love to read every single email thoroughly and you know in, in the absolute detail we don't have time we've got hundreds of emails coming in all the time so you know if you if you're sending me this great long lengthy email we won't have time to read it and 
I don't want to leave you out. Michelle, you don't want to leave anyone out, do you? We, we, want, we want to reply to you, but you're, we're going to reply to you much quicker, much easier, and much more succinctly if you are succinct and keep it short and sweet. Let's have another question. Do we have any? Yeah. Okay. We have several. Oh, now. yay. Good. Come on. Let's participate. Please, please, please. Yes. Rosa says, good morning, Rosemary. Good Mary. morning, my darling Rosa. And Michelle. Thank you for your help. Just maybe you might know, had a call in my answering machine of someone knocking six times. She would like to know if it was her husband. Um... I don't know, Rosa. I'd have to know more about it, my darling, and as you know, and sometimes it takes time for that. But, you know, we all need to watch for signals and signs from our loved ones because they do send us those signs. It, it may well be your, your husband saying, it's okay, you're going to be okay. So it might be that, but I need, you know, I can't really say for sure. Let's go to the next question. The next one is from Marlene. Good morning, Marlene. She said, Rosemary, I started going gray in my 20s, and after all these <laughs> years, I'm finally going natural. What? My stylist oh, says, golly. My stylist says that she can make me look lovely. Okay, well, you know, I'm, thank you for that. Um, you know, my, uh, my husband, my, on my husband's side of the family, gosh, I'm going back a long time, uh, his mother was snow white before she was 20 by the time of 18 or 19 she was snow white and i can remember once i colored her hair and colored it into, colored it brown she looked at least 15 years younger but she just couldn't keep it up so you know but you know nowadays you can have these beautiful tints that lift your hair and make it shine and so go for it my darling there's nothing wrong with going natural and that you know if i didn't want to go nat if i didn't want to go naturally i would if i was bothered about these little bits of gray in here i know even when i go into the roots at the back it's still same color uh you know so so i'm lucky but uh I don't know what's going to happen if I do go grey all over. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I'll probably keep colouring it, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I'll let you know. But you go, girl. You go natural. Just let us know how it turns out. Let's have another question. Dean, Dean is on. Dean is on. Hi, Dean. Yes. I was once. Told... Is he drinking his hot toddy yet? Is my I was a little so bit not. early. <laughs> he says, I was told once that my family in the spirit world hangs around in a huge family group. Might this be true? Yes, of course. Yeah. I mean, if they get on, if they like each other, if, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like it is here. You know, we might not see our family for a few weeks or even a few months at a time, and then we all get together and have a big family get together. So yes, uh, I mean, you know, but we've also got other things to do. So, you know, it's, it's a, again, it's a bit like it is here. If somebody's working or somebody's studying or somebody wants to go and visit somebody else, they might not be at that family gathering on that particular day in that particular moment. But, you know, yes, we, we meet, we connect, and especially, especially if we have things in common, you, you, as far as I understand, and remember, I'm, you know, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. But as far as I, I understand, you don't have to be with people that you don't want to be with, which works really well for me because here on this earth, <laughs> I'm rarely with people that I don't want to be with because I got rid of all that stuff years and years ago. So, uh, you know, so, um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's true next question kitty is on good morning kitty and she would like to know what happens to a stillborn or miscarried children do they rebirth into this world now it's interesting you should ask that question kitty because i was recently uh giving a consultation to a lady who had had um three mis three or four mis three miscarriages and then she had twins uh, who were born and and survived for a little while, but then uh, unfortunately, um, they you know 
they passed. Uh, when she came to talk to me, I didn't really know anything about her. Um, and um, the first thing I saw, I think, well, I heard first of all, I think I might have talked about this last week, I heard a little girl giggling away to my right side and then I felt uh, small hands touching my face on the, on the left side. And uh, so I was able to connect with her twins and um, uh, uh, the way they came to me was I could hear uh, them singing and I think I sang that song last week, A Little Girl and a Little Boy. Uh, and yes, she lost those children and um, my understanding is that they, as she grows, they're going to, de they've decided to grow, they've decided to get older. However, now, what about the miscarriages? Um, in the background, I saw another little girl and uh, um, and then I saw other other children. So do they survive? Uh, yes. And it's very interesting because Greg will tell me because I I had uh, three miscarriages before I had my daughter, and I had two miscarriages after I'd had her. So, you know, so it's an interesting topic to me. Uh, but uh, I asked Greg, well, why? Why, you know, why do we, why do we as as mothers have to go through that? We have we have this child, this this baby. We're thinking of it as a baby, especially after a few weeks of holding this child in our womb and and becoming attached to it. Uh, I did almost from the word go. Um, and why does that happen? And I was actually told that in many cases. Uh, souls choose to um, have that time of experiencing the womb. They want to know what it feels like to experience, to have that connection with, uh, with another soul who is living on this earth plane. So they have a connection to the mother who is living on this earth plane and they want that experience of, of knowing and understanding, feeling and sharing the energy of the mother. Uh, but that's all they need to do and that's that's what they want and then they they leave and they move on but that's all they choose to do then I'm told that there are other uh, souls who want the experience of taking that first breath uh, of the earth because it's you know it's, it is very different than the spirit world um, they want that experience of taking that first breath or they want that experience of being held and taking that first breath and so on and so forth so it's it's uh, uh, curious and um in um when we do get the the book gregel speaks uh which we are working on uh there are so many words of wisdom and so much information about so many different things and that is uh one of those pieces of it, pieces of information that gregel has shared with me in this book when I've asked him questions about different things and uh, you know so it's 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 curious it's a, it's a curiosity um, a soul makes a choice we who are here on this earth and living this mortal life we made a choice to come here and to do this uh, there are things we need to learn the things we need to experience so that our soul can learn and grow and become more um, but some souls choose just to have a, a, a moment of the earth plane or a moment of connecting with that mortal being that is uh, called, you know, we call mother. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a curiosity. And I can go on and on with this subject because there's so much more to say about it, but we're going to leave it there because we don't have time to go into all of the ins and outs of it. Nevertheless, how fascinating is that? Let's, are you fascinated by that, Michelle? I am. I can see you listening carefully to that. It's interesting, isn't it? We never think of it that way, do we? We rarely think, you know, maybe the soul has chosen just to have this small part of us. But anyway, let's have another question, shall we? Okay. Marlene said, I woke up at 4.30 this morning thinking of my mom. It felt like my soul was talking to her soul oh, and that we visited nice, for a while. Oh, nice. And you want to know if it's real. And of course, you know, you you already know the answer, don't you? <laughs> You're just wanting me to confirm it. So I'm confirming it. Yes, always, always, always. We're always able to, to connect with our loved ones. Yes. Joanne says, 
is that she has a friend that's been in a coma for five years. Is she, and she would like to know, is her friend still in her body or is she more out of her body? Uh, good morning, Joanne. You know, I've had uh, quite a few experiences of people in comas. It's my experience that um, they will come and go. Uh, they will travel, they will explore. One wonders why they're still holding on and it's because they choose to uh, to, to stay and have the experience. You know, don't think that if somebody's in a coma that they can't hear you. Don't think that they can't connect with you because their soul will connect with your soul. Don't ever think that they can't hear you or hear what you're saying. Always talk to them, always bring them news. Just, you know, you, you, you know, that there are so many people who come out of comas and they'll, they'll tell us all of the things that we've, we've been saying to them over the years. They'll remember certain things. But very often when someone is in this sleep state, because that's what it is, um, they seem to be in neither world. They are actually exploring, uh, usually they're exploring the spirit world. They're exploring all the things that are out there for them to do, but they are also holding on to their loved ones. They're holding on to this life. Uh, they're holding on to the experience of, uh, of still being with their families, still connecting with the nurses, with the doctors. They're holding on to that experience for whatever reason, it's, it varies with each person. Let's have another question. Okay, the next one is from Christina and Good it morning. says, hello, Rosemary. Morning, My Christina. question is, mm -hmm. do we all have spirit guides? No. <laughs> I've talked about this subject so many times and if you want to go back and check uh, the YouTube channel you can see my opinions <coughs> of that however if you if you want to uh, you know we are going to discuss in more detail um, the idea of spirit guides um, their their roles um, the idea of our guardian angels, do we all have an angel, do we all have, uh, you know, do, do we have angels around us uh, all the time? Uh, we're also going to be discussing, you know, who is guiding and steering us and uh, how does that work? Uh, so um, for now, no, not everybody has a spirit guide, only people who work, let's say, full time in this arena, in this spiritual arena are are people who are likely to have a spirit guide but even then not always by any means a spirit guide is a highly evolved spiritual being it's like saying you know it's like a first year nurse going to the hospital and uh, and expecting the the major heart surgeon or head of hospital to be walking around with them and teaching them and guiding them not going to happen is it uh, because you know she's a first year and he's a you know he's a a superhero to so many people this uh, you know this head of hospital uh, with all of the knowledge and so on and so forth so he's only going to take under his wing those nurses or doctors who show great promise so think of it that way it it is a nonsense really if you use common sense in all things that are spiritual, it really, honestly, isn't it a nonsense to expect that, you know, most of us, we go to work, we've got kids, we watch TV, we have our coffee, we make dinner, we do all that stuff, which I, I do as well, don't misunderstand me, but who don't even think twice about, you know, working for the spirit world particularly. It's a nonsense to think that that person has a highly evolved spiritual being sort of hanging around them just waiting for that one moment in the day or even that one moment in the week where oh oh you know i'm going to say my prayers tonight so just a nonsense please use common sense right let's have our next question if i sounded then a little uh, did i sound a little bit uh, like a teacher sort of or giving a lecture I didn't mean to do that but i really do wish that people would use more common sense because you know applied common sense just makes sense to me Yes. Patricia says, alert oh, to all me. women. <laughs> what? Alert oh. to all women. Do alert not let yourself go gray. It makes <laughs> men look distinguished, but women look old. Just a thought. Okay. There's a... Um, oh, gosh. I wish I could uh, think of, of uh, 
who it was is a there's a, a a really lovely i think she's a movie star she's a celebrity and she was very close to her fa father and on her on her father's deathbed he uh leaned over to her and he, he he said to her that he you know she really thought that he was give, going to give us some really profound profound uh information and uh, so he's it's, it's, it's almost his last breath and he whispers to her just don't let yourself go like your mother did <laughs> i just say it sort of just reminded me what was the alert to all women uh, not to go gray not to go gray i think here's my alert to all women be your best self uh if you want a facelift have a facelift if you want to, if you're happy with your saggy wrinkles, you know, keep them. It doesn't, whatever makes you happy. If you want to uh, get rid of your gray, go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, if you don't care about it and you're a happy person anyway, that's also fine. So my alert to all women is be the best that you can be, which doesn't mean false eyelashes, makeup, doesn't mean you got to look like a superstar. Be the best you can be inside inside yes i laughed at that because i don't even put on makeup <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, don't. I know well you know well there you are okay <laughs> nutty has a question yep she says is your soul your personality and was sends to the spirit world it, what does your soul aspect? your personality all of that i think does all of that go with you when you go to yes the, your soul is not your personality but your soul has a personality which is, you know, uh, striving to be the best it can be, the happiest it can be. And we, in our role, we have to feed our soul by giving it great energy, positive energy, which can help to build it and make it shine out and grow. And of course we take that with us. Of course, it's the soul that leaves our physical body and goes uh, forward. Yes, let's have another question. Mary is on. Good morning, Mary. And Mary would like to know what Grey Eagle thinks of Donald Trump. Oh, don't you dare do that to me, Mary. I love, I, lo I love the way you sneak it in there. You know perfectly well, all of you, I never get into politics. Um, if I talk about Donald Trump, I will also talk about who? Hillary Clinton? Well, because they Clinton ran together, didn't they? Biden opposing each this. other. There's a whole bunch of them. Right? Sanders. Honestly, I mean, you have to know my opinion of these people, not necessarily Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, but people who lie, people who um, give one face to the world and have another face, uh, for, you know, for someone else. Uh, for me, what you see is what you get. This is me. I'm, I, I'm never different. Am I ever any different? whether I'm on camera or off camera, this is me, right? Um, I don't, you know, I think that politics must be a very difficult game to play because, um, you know, <clears throat> you have to be ruthless, you have to be uh, a little bit cutthroat. Uh, whatever your aff affinity is, I know that there are people who think that Hillary Clinton is the most wonderful person in the world. Now, come on. She has to be tough. She has to be ruthless. It's That's her job. She's chosen politics. Uh, only the toughest and the roughest and the people capable of being ruthless go into politics. Are you getting my drift here? So, um, what, I can, what does Grey Eagle think of people who lie and cheat? And I can tell you absolutely thinks the same that I do. Uh, no time for them whatsoever. Turn your face away from the lies the liars and the cheaters, he says. Turn your face away and move forward and be positive and be your best self. Let's go. All right. So, Patricia is on. Morning, and Patricia. She says, is the fact that several children with the same parents are so different due to the fact that they each bring into this incarnation different experiences from past lives? Oh, uh, <laughs> Different children from the same parents? Yeah. All right. You need to read soul signs because 
the differences in the type of energy that each soul is created from. Uh, the type of energy uh, and the type of personality created from that energy that each person is. It really doesn't have a great deal to do with um, uh, parents, although your upbringing, your parents can either encourage who you are and encourage that part of you uh, which is good and positive, or they can bring out the negative in you. But our character traits, our soul's energy is what it is prior to birth being created from those certain pockets of energy that are out there for us. And there are basically 13 uh, different soul types. Um, you need to read Soul Signs, my darling. And if you want to know how to find that, you need to email me, rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com. It will explain to you everything you ever need to know and understand. It explains why your mother loves your sister more than she loves you. It explains why your father preferred your brother, not because he's a boy necessarily, but because their energy is compatible. Their soul signs are compatible. This is, I'm not talking about um, astrology now. I'm not talking about the stars, the, the planets, I'm talking about how our soul is created and what it is created from and the type of energy that is created, the soul is created from, tells who we are. But again, our upbringing does count because as I've said, you know, our parents can knock the goodness out of us or they can encourage the goodness to come up and, that, and that's true of everyone. So, you know, it's a, it's a question really of uh, nature and this is who we are however nurture does come into it because as I've just said our parents can nurture the good or they can nurture the bad they can encourage us to be who we are or they can try and clamp down on us and tell us that we you know don't do this don't do that don't be who you are they can say all of those things which do affect us so read soul science is my advice to you yes Julia is on and she says, Dear Rosemary. Good morning, Julie. I Is married it Julie or Julia? Julia. Julia. Good morning, Julia. It says, I'm married to an Englishman living in Essex. My son was born in the U.S. and does not want to move to the U U.K. Okay. I'm stuck between two continents and two people that I love. Mm. What do I do? I wish my mom was here. Oh. Uh, you got to follow your heart, right? Um, you, you've not said what nationality you are, but if you're... If your son is in the US, I'm going to presume that you, you're from the US. How old is your son? I mean, uh, how independent is he? Uh, if he's a, a, an eight-year-old, you belong with him, don't you? If he's an 18-year-old, he might want to just live his life and enjoy his life. And, you know, I, I have the same dilemma. My daughter is in New York. I know it's not a different country, uh, but it might as well be. But what we do, what you might want to consider doing is, um, you know, to, uh, to FaceTime. Uh, I FaceTime with my daughter several times a day and always at night time before my darling boy goes to bed, we FaceTime. So we do keep that connection. We do have that connection and we do still have that, you know, we have that, uh, the, we have a very, very close relationship because we work at it. If your husband is a good husband and a good man, and you love him, uh, maybe that's where you should be, depending on how old your son is, because your son is going to eventually meet somebody and get a partner and you'll be ditched, truthfully. You'll be, you'll be included uh, when they want to include you. If you're lucky, that will be quite a bit, but he'll have his own family and his own life, and then where will you be? So, that would be your mother's advice to you too, by the way, according to what Craig is telling me. Let's have another question. Sharon has a question. Yes. She says, do creative people, authors, musicians, and such, on the, in the spirit world, regret that they can no longer share their talents on this side? But they do share their talents. Um, first of all, I'm a great believer. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, just last night. She came for dinner. And we were talking about, you know, um, how, what it must be, I was saying, what it must be like to, uh, to, to sort of live a, a mundane life, do the same thing every day, and just at the end of your life, look back and have 
and have nothing. Uh, you you know there's there's you've done nothing. You've not made an impact anywhere. But every one of us has an opportunity. Every one of us has a chance. Every one of us has a choice. If you're a musician, uh, it don't matter how good or bad you are. Record yourself. You leave it that to your kids. Uh, I've got lots of videos and I've been on TV all over the world and I'm leaving all of that behind for my daughter and my grandson because so they can find me but the, you, there's no need for you to to not uh, you know don't wait until the end and say I wish I'd done this or this or this do it just get on and do it and you know if you want to write poetry there's a, a, I heard of a lovely lady I'm sure many of you have done this who um, wrote her child a letter every day never gave it to him but wrote a letter every day stored them and when she died he found the box of letters like you can imagine sometimes it was a letter just saying i love you sometimes it was a letter saying what she'd done with the day or how she was feeling that day but she left him she left her heart behind for him to find it and how lovely for him so you don't you know you don't have to live with these regrets so so don't let's have another question i hope that helps you my darling get on and do something leave something behind uh, for your loved ones something of you that maybe nobody else will think is special but hey you know uh you will they will right yes come on i'm getting there <laughs> she's <laughs> slowly working her way through yeah um the earth guardian says is october 9th the correct day of my birth and what is the time i was born i don't do astronomy i'm not a charts lover i've no, I've no idea but you can you can find out you can you know there are lots of places that you can go if you i mean I once knew years ago a, a lovely lady, she was an astrologer, she was brilliant actually, um, she really knew her stuff and she was able to find out all sorts of things just by information. If, you, if you're if you a founding or if you if you don't know uh, that you know your true birthday, if you've never met your mother for instance or what have you, uh, there are lots of things that indicate your personality so people can actually sort of come fairly close to it. but. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not the person that you seek. I'm not that expert. Yes, Mary would like to know. Yes, Mary. If birthmarks have a deeper meaning. Um, there are people who do believe that, and there are people who think that it's about the energy and and connected energy with your, with your uh, birth mother. I mean. Um, you know there are there are stories of uh, mothers who eat strawberries and they're uh, and they're sort of you know eat lots of strawberries and then their child is born with a strawberry birthmark. I don't know how true that is, but I do know that thoughts and energy are connected. And when you're thinking about your you know your baby in your womb and you're thinking certain things and you have certain thoughts. I mean, it is, I suppose, possible that that energy is reflected or or the baby captures that energy and it can sometimes show uh, in a birthmark. Again, I'm not an expert in that realm, but I can see that it, it, it might happen. Let's have another question. That's, that's a question that I want to know the answer to. What? So if it's the energy that you think it may be the energy that gets captured that creates the birthmark. I said, I said maybe. Yeah. I said maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Then what about people who have so many multiple birthmarks? Because I have like 12. Oh. And my daughter has like six. Well, well aren't you lucky then? <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I've no... I don't, you've got to look at someone else for the answer. Okay. I'm not <laughs> I'm even going to pretend to be an expert. Uh, the good thing about people who who know who they are and they know what they do and they're comfortable with their expertise is they're perfectly happy to say i don't know when they don't know and i don't know so there you are i'm sorry but there you are i can't answer do we have any other questions? oh no we've got lots <laughs> oh, <we get> <laughs> everything's oh, still going great. good 
Oh, I'm so pleased that you listened to me when I said, oh, come on, come on, come on, because otherwise I'm leaving. So, yeah, go ahead. Keep them coming then, Michelle. Leah, which I believe her actual name is Annabelle. Good morning, Leah, um, or Annabelle, or whoever you are, my darling. We it don't, says, we why does really... this question is answered? Why what? So I'm not sure what she's talking about, because I didn't see where she had made a comment previous to that. Oh. We don't know what you mean, darling, so if you'd like to put in the question again, we're happy to see if we can answer it. Let's have another go. Um, let's see what else we got here. Sarah says, tomorrow is the anniversary of my husband's passing. It's still so difficult, especially with all the Valentine's stuff everywhere. I know. How awful. Do you have any advice or messages for me? Thank you. Um... I know that it's it's so difficult and you know it it's so awful isn't it when when someone passes on Christmas day or they pass on your birthday or they pass on Valentine's day you know they you sort of you know it seems somehow it 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 sort of seems worse in a way the advice that I would give you my darling is this you love him and he loves you and Valentine's day is a really good day to celebrate that visualize him when you wake up tomorrow visualize him standing well actually i was going to say standing in the corner of the room looking at you but gregor says visualize him in bed with you cuddling up to you because i think that according to gregor that might be where he is uh and just think love 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 all day and value what you had value what you have still together don't think that because he's not here any longer that you don't have that together because you do so value what you have and uh, find joy in having found your partner let's have another question okay patricia said i had spirit friends as a child but my parents are catholic they always told me i had a good imagination imagination but i knew what i was seeing was real good glad glad to hear it um, is there a question in there no dean uh, said but hold on patricia lovely and you keep you keep to your guns because uh, many, many children uh, see, uh, uh, you know, you might say imaginary friends. They see children, other children in the spirit world. They see people in the spirit world. When we're small, when we're little children, we have, you know, as we have nobody really to, to say, it, 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 you know, um, you're being ridiculous. Or, or pe Although people do, that's the nature versus nurture thing that I was talking about earlier. But we know what we know as children and we are sensitive as children. We are able to be open and we are able to connect in a way that as we grow older, we, we most of us lose that. So you hold on to that, my darling, because I think you're right. Yes, Dean says. Dean said this is the first day his feet has not been stopping every three seconds. Yay, Dean. <laughs> oh. oh, well, you know, slow down, enjoy the day, have another hot toddy. And you're ready for class tonight. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Mary said that she wishes everybody a happy Valentine's Day, and it seems like February is a love month. Well, you know, February is a special month for me because my grandson was born on um, on uh, February 12th. Oh, he wasn't supposed to be born for at least another week to 10 days, and he came, uh, let's say he came, well, I don't think he came early because I know ex I knew exactly what time he was going to be born and exactly what day he was going to be born. So he came on time as far as I was concerned, but the, you know the doctor's calculations calculated that he wouldn't be coming in for another ten days at least. But as Samantha sort of got closer and then was in the hospital, there was this debate as to is she is is he going to be born on Valentine's Day, right? I'm so glad that he wasn't born on Valentine's Day because we now have two reasons to celebrate instead of just the one birthday. However, having said that, he's already had his party on Sunday. Uh, he had another little party yesterday. He's having a party with me. Keep the birthdays going. We're also celebrating Valentine's Day. Uh, I've sent him a Valentine's card and my daughter Valentine's card, as I always do. It, it is the month of love however you know do you know i was thinking this just yesterday i cannot remember the last time anyone sent me a valentine's card is it because i'm getting old 
and nobody loves me anymore. Okay. Uh, that, as is aside from my daughter and my grandson, I'm sure they'll come up with something. But you know, when, when, when you were younger, you used to get a Valentine's card and there was a, a, instead of somebody signing it, there was a question mark. And sometimes you never even found out who it was who would send you the Valentine's card. Kind of fun and exciting. Enjoy it. All of you who are young enough to enjoy it, enjoy it while it lasts. I might go out today and buy myself a Valentine's card, send Valentine's it to me day. and put a question mark. Who sent this? Oh, gosh, I can pretend the whole day. I don't know who sent it to me, but whoever it is must love me very much. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I won't do that. Enjoy the love. Enjoy Valentine's Day. Right. We don't celebrate Valentine's Day. You don't? Why not? Any reason? Because our anniversary is like two days later. So oh, we... okay. So you save it all up then. We just uh, do it all in the same. Okay. All right. Next. Megan is on. And she says, hello, Morning, my Megan. friends. Hi. <laughs> Curious if being born on the same birthday means anything. My sister and my son were both born on my birthday. Interesting. We have that in common. My daughter was born on my birthday. Yeah. My brothers, my two brothers were born two years apart on the same day. I'm not sure if it's if it's significant. Um, again, I'm, you know, I bow to the expertise of others in that regard. Randy's on. Good morning, Randy. And he says hello first. Hi. And then he says, "How do I deal with people who make a fuss over everything? I'm very passive and go with the flow, but my partner, on the other hand, Ooh. or am I the one being fussy about her being fussy?" <laughs> All right, well, it sounds to me like you're an air sign. Um, we're talking soul signs now, not astrology. And it sounds to me like your partner is maybe a fire sign because boy, oh boy, do they, you know, they create havoc wherever they go. But they are very passionate, very loving, and, you know, and the reason that they often make a fuss is because they are so passionate. However, let me tell you that you are the most compatible fire signs and air signs feed each other are extremely compatible with each other so don't you know don't get to just sort of don't get too upset when she is creating her fusses uh, but and if you want to stop it just grab hold of her and give her a big fat wet kiss and tell her you love her be quiet let me kiss you let me hug you let me love you and be quiet let, let it go uh, and uh, but it is who she is we have to learn sometimes to accept rather than to try to change someone and, and again soul science is a perfect perfect book to help people to understand really truly understand why one person behaves one way about a thing and another person behaves another way and once you understand it's about the energy the energy that their soul is created from you stop judging and start accepting it's much easier to accept so, Randy, got some work cut out for you there. Yes. All right, we have lots of people saying that they would mail you Valentine's <laughs> Day cards if they had your address. <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. That's so nice of you all. Um, but there's no need. Dark chocolate liquid cherries work for me. <laughs> No, come on, move it, move on. Let's have another question. Lori, that's, so, that's so sweet of all of you, but thank you. All right. Lori said that her aunts played a joke on one of her uncles for years. They found a friend who was traveling and would have them mail him a Valentine's card from a secret admirer from all different places oh, all over funny. while they were traveling. That's funny. That's not nice, though, is it? <laughs> Is it? Um, no, no. It's funny though. I do know uh, I had a client who used to get um, a huge bouquet of uh, freesias uh, on her every birthday and every Valentine's Day. Um, she knew who they were from, but the rest of her family and her husband never found out and she never told them. And the only way that I know about it is because that secret admirer that she had for over 30 years uh, finally did pass into the spirit world and she came to see me to connect with him and uh, he was the one who told me send her freesias it's her birthday coming up please send not literally send her freesias but tell her i'm sending her freesias and uh, that was when she knew that it was truly him 
So all sorts of things go on. People have secrets, don't they? And, uh, and sometimes, you know, they're lovely. And as long as this doesn't hurt anybody else, it's fine. Let's have another question. Joanne says, enjoy your grandson and happy birthday to him. Thank Bye, you. Michelle. Both of you have a wonderful day. Bye, Joanne. <laughs> yes, we are coming uh -huh. to a close. Anything else going on there? Lori said they'd find, they'd find whatever friend was going on vaca vacation and get them to mail it from wherever they were going. <laughs> That's hilarious. Kind of mean, though. Naughty. Oh, no. It's that definitely naughty, guy. but it is hilarious. That's that, something I would do. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> yes. Next. Any other questions before um, we uh, close? I've got a bacon sandwich to cook. Megan <laughs> said <laughs> something mention. cute and sweet. My youngest kids received bath bombs as gifts. They came into my room together and told me this one is for you, Mom. Aww. It is Rosemary and you love your friend Rosemary. Oh, how lovely. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for that, my darling. That's lovely. And what lovely, cute children you have. Anything else going on? All right. So, yes, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that you need a partner uh, or, you know, that, you know, that special one person in your life to show you that they love you or for you to show them that you love them. Uh, take the opportunity. Make it a week long. It might even grow into two weeks, three weeks, five weeks. You might find yourself doing it all the time. Send out some love. Just keep sending out that love to everyone you know, to everyone you meet. Um, you know, people, as I'm going shopping, I'm in the supermarket. It happened to me the other day, I was in Walmart, and people kept sort of giving me that, you know how when people walk by and they give you that second glance? Of course, I want to think it's because I'm so gorgeous to look at, but actually really what it is, is that I didn't realize I walk around, I've got a smile on my face the majority of the time. I'm happy, I'm a happy person. People give you a second look because they too want to sort of share that little bit of joy, that little bit of happiness. And the amount of people who smile back is amazing. Send out that love, send out that joy, smile wherever you go. And if you do have a special someone, as I have my special two someones, my daughter and my grandson, if you do have that special someone, never be afraid to say, I love you. My grandson have this thing that we do. I'll say, I love you, my darling boy. He'll say, I love you more. Oh, no, you don't. I love you more. Well, actually, he'll say, well, actually, Mosey, I love you more. And on and on we go until finally my daughter puts a stop to it. Never be afraid to say you love someone. Never be afraid. And if you're a person who doesn't know how to say I love you, you know what? Tomorrow's a great day to start, isn't it? Don't be afraid. The worst thing that can happen is that you get rejected. So what? Find someone else you can say it to. Say I love you. Don't ever be afraid. Don't live your life regretting the fact that you never told anyone that you love them. Start tomorrow. We shall be here this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our Everything is Attitude with my co-host Al Pisano. And I shall, yes, be with my class tonight later on. Uh, yes, I know it's a long day for me, working long hours, but that's okay because I enjoy it so much. Again, if you want to know anything more about us, if you want to know about uh, how you get a consultation with me, if you want to know how to buy my books, if you want to know about the webinars, or um, we're putting stuff up on iTunes, even as we speak, we're trying to figure out how to do that. If anybody out there knows and can help us, we're willing to take all the advice you can give us. Um, so we're doing all of this stuff and one way to keep up with this is to go on my Facebook page. Another way to keep up with this is to ask to be put on our mailing list. So we'll send you all that information whenever we can. So, all right. So um, what else? If you want to know any more about us, again, email us rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com. I'm hoping that I will see some of you at least tonight. Uh, it will be recorded and we will upload, you'll find it on Facebook, my Facebook page, my healing Facebook page, and it will be uploaded to YouTube's, YouTube soon after that. So, you know, just, uh, just tune in if you have questions, 
we love it. If you have comments, we love it. Thank you for being with us today. Have a very, very happy, um, bl blessed rest of the day. And uh, the weekend is coming up. Think of me. I have my darling seven-year-old boy. I'm so excited. We'll be in the pool. My daughter will be there, of course. We'll be in the pool. We'll be playing around. We're having a party on Sunday. Michelle's coming with all of her brood and so on and so forth and other people too so Let's think go. of us we're going to be having a fabulous weekend i hope that you will have a very very blessed rest of the day and a beautiful and a blessed weekend bye everyone